Greetings. I'm Depeche Nofsaria, President of the Wisconsin Chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Dear colleagues, friends, and beyond, this is one of those times that it is not a cliche to say that we are living in unprecedented times. The global emergence of COVID-19 has certainly displayed the weaknesses in our nation's public health and healthcare systems, and it's affecting every level of our society. Just about no aspect of our country is left untouched. At the same time, it's also showing us what is possible as a collective whole. Clinicians, allied health staff, health systems, state and local governments, early childhood, and so many, many more are all banding together to prepare, protect, and parry the expected increase in cases from coast to coast. <clears throat> this is not just practical. It is a form of deep regard for the safety and ongoing existence of our fellow human beings. To see this playing out in community after community is so inspiring that I wrote a column about it entitled Love in the Time of Coronavirus at the Capital Times in Madison, Wisconsin. Please know that your chapter knows how hard you're working to be prepared. Whether you're in frontline ambulatory settings, inpatient units, specialty care, public health, or the many other allied fields that touch children's health, I know all too well how much time and effort is being expended. Untold long days, weekends, and nights are going into extraordinary planning. It's appreciated. Your hardworking executive director, Kia Shendrid, is, has compiled and is updating a list of resources related to COVID-19 that may be helpful. It's available on our website at wiaap.org. While children appear to not be as hard hit as adults by COVID-19, they are still at risk from this pandemic. As child health professionals, it behooves us to remain ready and willing to ensure that children's needs are still being met adequately in the short term and that conditions to allow them to flourish occur in the longer term. As such, children will still need health care, including immunizations, evaluation of illness and injury, hospitalizations, and care for chronic conditions, all the issues that continue to occur despite a pandemic. While some delays in non-essential care may occur in order to afford the pandemic response, ensuring that children's access to health care is not wholly pushed aside will benefit from your voices locally and beyond. Children will need to be cared for, particularly as their parents may need to continue to work. While flexibility is being offered in child care standards and the like, we should ensure that children are not being given poor or even dangerous care in the name of expediency. Children still deserve experienced care from those who understand their needs. Work to speak up for prompt but child protecting solutions to this concern. Additionally, many families rely on school and early childhood education programs to provide a fair amount of their children's nutritional needs. Endeavor to help families learn where they can access food during this difficult time. Many schools are continuing to make food available for pickup, thanks to flexibility allowed by the USDA. If these provisions have not yet been implemented, ask why until you get meaningful change. Many of you are already assisting with the many questions and concerns from individuals, businesses, agencies, and beyond. Pediatrics often sits at the intersection of clinical medicine and public health, and this is no exception. Our friends in public health and infection control are being overwhelmed with queries. So where you can help provide informal guidance, it will be calming and a contribution to your community. Science communication becomes even more important in this kind of situation. We know how to do this. We routinely explain complex medical conditions to not only parents, but to children over a wide variety of ages. Take the opportunity to broaden this role. Speak with media and others to ensure that high quality information is being shared throughout our state. <clears throat> On that note, families may struggle to know how to explain to their children what is happening, why regular events are not occurring, why they can't meet all their friends at the mall, and to adequately shield them from their own anxiety and worry. We are trusted voices that help guide families through these challenges and should continue to do so. Essential personnel are not just frontline healthcare workers. As you all know, it takes many others to back up the work that we do. 
from laboratory technicians to supply manufacturers to janitors and well beyond. Public safety and public health personnel are also working hard and they will also have childcare and other needs. Speak up in discussions for what they will need as well, including health insurance, paid sick leave, and more. Take steps to be a voice speaking out for our marginalized and least well-resourced neighbors. Many families do not have backup child care for when schools and early education centers close, are not afforded paid sick leave, and may be out of work or facing deep pay cuts due to their place of employment partially or completely closing. These family issues are all pediatric issues as well. Speak up for policy solutions, community approaches, and informal assistance alike in addressing these needs. Thinking longer term, these may be our first steps to thinking about how we solve our ongoing societal challenges through well-designed policy solutions as we eventually move towards this situation resolving Consider how to advance conversations about how this highlights the structural weaknesses in our existing system through an equity lens. Finally, be on guard for racism and discrimination around this pandemic. Long since rife on an implicit level and smoldering and occasionally flaring into the realm of explicit as tensions rise, COVID-19 cares not a whit for your race, ethnicity, religion, gender, sexual orientation, immigration status, or political affiliation. The American Academy of Pediatrics nationally has long since spoken on this subject, and it's never more important than it is at times of national stress like this. I hope these ideas and conceptual frames give you some ways to think about the broader picture of children's health in this unique time in the world. Your chapter continues to remain dedicated to the health of all children in the Badger State, and we can only do so alongside our fantastic members, partners, and colleagues throughout Wisconsin. Thank you.